130th contact Saturday, May 31st, 1980, 218 AM Billy, this is pleasing, that you finally appear once again. You were probably on vacation? Some yes, one. You were very peculiar and strange. Two. Everything about you seems to me to be without any feeling. 3. What has happened with you? 4. Ah, now I feel it. It. It is so painful. 5. What's the matter with you? 6. Oh, that is terrible. You are completely empty and blocked inside you, and you emit an icy cold. Billy, you notice absolutely everything. Some yes, seven. Even your voice sounds so peculiar and strange. Eight. Please come here to me and let me discern your inside. Billy, as you wish. Just don't be frightened by it. Some yes, nine. Ten. This is awful, dear friend. Eleven. You are completely destroyed inside you. Twelve. You are no longer capable of feelings, and they are all destroyed. 13. Just what has happened with you? 14. 15. Awful, you were like a living dead person, like a mechanical, psyche-free robot. 16. All feelings are dead inside you, and not even a tiny impulsation can be perceived or felt. 17. Tell me, just what has happened? 18. You are no longer a human being but only a machine. 19. Just how are you able to live like this? Billy, that is also a mystery to me. Some yes, 20. Just how is this terrible destruction come about? 21. You must resolve this soon, for in the long run, you won't be able to survive in this state. 22. You are destroying all your vital functions of the organs and the whole body. Billy, I know, but I can no longer change it. I don't even know how I was ever able to do it at all, to accomplish such destruction inside me. I am only aware that I blocked all my feelings, as I very often had to do that in order to cope with all sorts of things neutrally. But I then did that more and more intensively, until a very nasty and damned cold rose high in my chest. But it was then already too late to turn back, and I also could not find a way back. Since then, an icy pain sits in my chest, which sometimes makes me half mad. But all that leaves me so unaffected, has also everything else that approaches me from the outside world. There is simply nothing at all that can claim a feeling or some other impulsation from me. Semyas, 23. A mechanical robot. 24. I said that, yes. 25. But I know exactly that there can only be one reason for that, if you have enforced this in such a way as you just explained to me. 26. Moreover, it can only be that you have operated this work of destruction of your feeling centers for several weeks for such an insanity is not possible in the short time. 27. And an act of insanity was your doing. Billy, I also know that, but I simply couldn't help it. Semyas, 28. Sure, I understand already. 29. The reason for this can only be that you must have been faced with the decision to neglect a truthful love. 30. But you could only have been forced to do that. 31. Is that of correctness? Billy, why do you ask, then, if you already know it? You are damn illogical, if I may express this once with your own words. Semyas, 32. The expletive, however, doesn't come from my word usage. Billy, so what if that is just from me? Semyas, 33. You are rather rough in your language. Billy. How can I be otherwise? Semyas, 34. Of course, if you are no longer capable of feelings. 35. Come here, I want to know it exactly. 36. Sit down here. Billy, what do you want? Semyas, 37. 
you'll see. Billy, then so be it. Simeas, 38. Good, now wait a moment. Billy, what is that on the screen? Simeas, 39. Screen? Billy, I mean the display screen. Simeas, 40. That is the schematic of your feeling centers, which I have stored here. Billy, so, and what do you want with that? Simeas, 41. I want to create a comparison with the feeling centers of your present condition. 42. Wait. No, that. That cannot be true. 43. Oh dear, this is terrible. 44. This is much worse than I thought. Billy, what is it, then? Simeas, 45. Don't you see? Billy, no. Simeas, 46. That's exactly what scares me so much. Billy, I don't understand. Simeas, 47. The viewing screen, it records no impulses whatsoever. Billy, that's what I meant that I don't see anything. The display screen is blank. Simeas, 48. That it is, and that is so awful. Billy, and what does that mean, then? Probably that everything inside me is finally kaput, right? Simeas, 49. You talk about it coldly and without any connection to it. 50. But only now do I understand. 51. You are absolutely dead inside, for you are no longer capable of emotional impulsations. 52. Now I also understand that you cannot find a way to resolve this destruction. 53. That would be impossible for you. Billy, it also makes no difference to me. Simeas, 54. Do you not know, then, that a person cannot live in such a state? that his life will be ended within a short time. Billy, of course, but so what? Sometime, I would have to resign anyway, right? Simeas, 55. Of course, you know that, but my question was illogical. 56. Since you are, indeed, no longer capable of feelings, this knowledge is meaningless to you. 57. It is just a fact without content, completely without any connection to you. Billy, and? Simeas, 58. I must change that, because you can no longer help yourself. Billy, that also makes no difference to me, and on the other hand, I'll now finally get away from all vexation. Simeas, 59. That would please you so in your present state. Although, I also wish you peace at last. Billy, then it is, indeed, in order. Then in a short time, I will have probably made it. Simeas, 60. So simply you imagine that? Billy, sure. It really couldn't be any simpler. I've thrown down the pickaxe for myself, and now it should remain lying quietly and raw. Simeas, 61. I, however, may not allow that, and you know why. Billy, those damn laws, to which you are obligated. Simeas, 62. Sure, and you shouldn't hinder me from fulfilling my obligation. Billy, I don't want to anymore. Simeas, 63. It would be quite pointless if I would now speak of feelings in your estate, as you are, indeed, no longer capable of them. 64. Love, however, isn't solely a matter of feeling, for it reaches into the spiritual levels, namely where the fine spiritual perceptions wield their determinations. Billy, but only if this love is real and if it already exhibits forms that have reached universal levels. Simeas, 65. Right, that is so. 66. Your intellect and your rationality function clearly and sharply. 67. This form of love is present with you. Otherwise, you couldn't face me without me receiving harm. 68. Your vibrations, if it were otherwise, would hurl me away as you come towards me. 69. 
through this love, you regulate your vibrations that could become dangerous for me in the negative case. 70. Because your intellect and your rationality still function perfectly, which, in a short time, in two to three months, would no longer be the case, you act completely automatically and correctly in your spiritual love. 71. And precisely here lies the factor that I want to address, in order to be able to help you. 72. Think rationally and with understanding about being or non-being. Billy, you ask a damn lot from me. But on the other hand, I don't want what you want. Semyas, 73. I beg of you. Billy, that doesn't move me, however. I think it's better this way. Semyas, 74. Damned crap. Damn it. 75. You probably cannot be persuaded anymore. Billy, you are fantastic. You can suddenly curse, and moreover, you have a bright red head. You now probably have a great anger in your belly, eh? Man alive, this was really worth it, that I let you fumble around in me. Come here. Do it already, before I change my mind. Semyas, 76. You. I'm sorry. I? I'm hurrying. Billy, I'm sorry. This is really interesting and new, and I... Oh. Semyas, 77. Do you feel better again? Billy, oh. Girl, what was that? I suddenly had such a damned pain in my chest that I thought I would go directly to hell. What was that? Semyas, 78. By this button here, I relieved you somewhat unexpectedly of your consciousness for 16 minutes. 79. With the press of this button, I projected the stored feeling center schematic into you, namely through this tiny triangle here, even before you sat down. 80. It. Billy, you mean that they're onto the display screen? Semyas, 81. Sure. 82. You probably didn't notice it before? Billy, no. Semyas, 83. You see, even if you had said no, I could have helped you. Billy, would you have? Semyas, 84. Sure. Billy, but that would have been a use of force. Semyas, 85. Naturally, but it would have been an act of logical force, because if you had said no, then you would have only done that because of the influence of your self-destructive will. Billy, hectares. And now I feel as ever before. What you're capable of. But was this really all that you did? I really cannot imagine it. The feeling center's schematic shouldn't be enough for such a thing, right? But, somehow I really feel like a human being again, and, oh, come over here. There. Semyas, 86? Yes, you are again just as before. Billy. You were probably cassadected. Semyas, 87. You were very sparse with it, so it is a special, great joy to me each time. Billy, girl, be careful, because if certain people hear that, then I'll have all sorts of trouble and even the devil around my neck. Semyas, 88. It will even be read, because it will all be transmitted by me for the report. Billy, oh... You, blue 13, one, even that still. Well, then so be it. But now tell me, what was it that you did? Semyas, 89. You were right in assuming that I had to do something more. 90. The projecting end of the feeling center's schematic was carried out in a radiation-based and vibration-based manner. 91. This means that the schematic penetrated into you through radiations in order to expand circularly and vibrations in the feeling center in a sort of miniature explosion. 92. This caused you such a bad and great pain in your chest that was pervaded by an icy cold, due to the sudden warmth owing to the refunctioning of the feeling centers in such a sudden form, that you thereby lost consciousness. 93. The process for this only lasted less than a second. 94. 
During your consciousness-related absence, I used the vibration shock to put your entire emotional life, which is also stored with me here and which you, in your terms, would probably call a psychogram, into your feeling centers by means of several trillion data impulse vibrations. 95. Through this, your completely immobilized emotional life was newly activated and began to work again in the old manner. Billy, it all sounds so simple, but for you to be able to do this at all, it requires a lot. Simeus, 96. It would be far too time consuming and too complicated, if I should explain even just the basic details to you. Billy, there is no need for that, but I want to thank you very much for your help. Only now do I feel how terrible my condition really was. Simeus, 97. Sure, you can do this only because you are mighty in your world of feelings again. Billy, that is clear to me. It was really terrible, and if I had a mortal enemy, I myself would never wish that one such a thing. Simeus, 98. I understand what you mean. 99. But please, never admit yourself into such things anymore. Billy, I will guard myself, but in the Fergon case, I simply could not act differently. I also wasn't aware that I would find no way back from it. Simeus, 100. You really could not know that, but if you would have thought about it more thoroughly, then you would have at least got an inkling of it. Billy, I had that, yes, but I was so ready that I didn't particularly pay attention to it anymore. Simeus, 101. What, then, was the real reason for it? Billy, I was upset, so to speak, down to my blood. Simeus, 102. And of course, you were driven to this in an irrational and irresponsible manner, which cancels nothing of your own mistakes made, however, from which you have obviously already found out that which is instructive to you. Billy, you're right. I don't want to excuse my idiotic actions, but I was really driven to it by a rather bad coercion. But I would like to talk about that sometime later without everything becoming public. Simeus, 103. As you wish. Billy, good, then we can talk about something else. Why did you no longer come for so long? I called you many times, but I didn't receive a response. Simeus, 104. We were all absent. 105. We had to leave unexpectedly and there wasn't enough time to inform you about it. 106. We didn't arrive back here until a few hours ago. Billy, that's almost what I thought myself. Thus, you probably don't know what all has happened with us in the meantime. Simeus, 107. No, and I would be grateful to you if you could later tell and explain everything to me. Billy, oh, it wasn't so much, and you can get the most important things much more quickly and in greater detail from the monitoring disk, I mean from the recording device. Simeus, 108. I cannot do that, unfortunately, because during our departure, we failed to insert larger recording elements, which is why now only a single month is recorded. Billy, and when was this element at the end of its power? Simeus, 109. At the end of the month of March. Billy, that is bad, because then exactly that incident isn't recorded, about which I wanted to know a few things. Simeus, 110. And what was that? Billy, once again, one has tried to blow out my life's flame. This was now the seventh time. This attempted murder was the seventh in Switzerland but the eighth overall because the first attempted murder took place in 1964 in Merali, India, with which Billy's left arm was shot through. Witnesses, Billy's teacher among Dharmawara, Fobal Cheng, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Mira, Mrs. Fisk and Miss Crystal Rogers. A later witness of the gunshot wound was, among others, Reinhold Geiger from Germany, who is still friends with Billy to this day. 
No 2004. Semyas, 111. I warned you early on, and therefore, it cannot scare me, especially since you're standing in front of me without any harm. 112. What exactly happened and when? Billy, it was on May 11th, at 10 p.m. At this time, I was sitting on a sofa in front of the house with Wendell Stevens. Suddenly, a very quickly emerging lower back pain warned me, as so often appears with me when danger threatens me. This time, however, it was so strong that I was no longer able to stand up and get to the bottom of the matter or go to a place of safety. Wendell Stevens could only say to me two or three times, there is something wrong. I wasn't able to do anything more while I was writhing back and forth in pain. Then suddenly, just a few centimeters to the left of my head, something banged into the stone wall and spattered me with mortar, while just a tiny fraction of a second later, a shot banged. Then I knew, of course, that yet another time had come. But then, after the shot, it still took about 10 seconds before I could stand up again, after which I then called Jacobus and searched the area together with him and Wendell. Of course, in vain, because as usual, no one could be found. When we then examined the hole in the wall about 10 minutes later, Gilgamesh found the bullet, which had rebounded off the plasterwork on the wall and which was completely flattened, behind the sofa. In my opinion, it was a revolver bullet of the caliber 7.5 millimeters. A pure lead bullet. The bang of the shot also pointed to a revolver. Semyas, 113. If you hadn't continuously moved because of your pains, then you would have probably been hit, or was it not so? Billy, he fired past my head by at least 8-10 centimeter. A damn bad shot. That one should first learn to shoot a little if he wants to do something like that. If he shoots wide with a revolver from a scanty 35 meters, he obviously shot from the Semyas tree and misses my head by about 10 centimeters. Then he should let himself be embalmed along with his lead syringe. Semyas, 114. You probably have no respect at all for such dangerous things. 115. That could have really been the end. Billy, hell no. That one should first learn to shoot. Semyas, 116. Do you know who it could have been? Billy, no, no idea. I only suspect that it was a man. Women very seldom shoot here through the area with revolvers at such distances. Besides, it was nearly night, and women don't get around to shootings of this kind then. But still other facts point to the fact that it must have been a man. One thing I have to leave to the guy, though, he has damn good eyes. Semyas, 117. And this incident of all could not be recorded. 118. Perhaps we could have finally found out something, in order to have success in these things at least once. 119. But on the other hand, I already warned you in the month of October, 1978, and also later again, that starting from the month of May, 1980, you should be extremely careful. 120. I also told you that you should move your workroom. 121. Have you done what is necessary concerning this? Billy, no, there weren't enough finances for that. I already had to go into 50,000 francs of debt, so that I can set out this summer for filming and photographing, if you can keep your promise. Semyas, 122. Your new devices cost that much? Billy, yes, along with a small tractor and trailer as a means of transportation. Semyas, 123. That is more than a fortune for you. Billy, you said it but there is no other way. Semyas, 124. At any rate, I will do my best to ensure that everything comes about as you hoped for. Billy, that is good, but tell me, I forgot to ask before, why, actually, have you all been absent for so long? Semyas, 
125. We were very busy and, indeed, very far away. Billy, what do you mean by very far? Do you speak according to your understanding or according to mine, in which case I must talk here on Earth of a far journey if someone flies to the moon? Simeus, 126. According to mine and, at the same time, according to an earthly sense. 127. Some of us were in the Dal universe, while others were on the planet Venus. Billy, what had they lost there? Simeus, 128. They were and are still occupied there with a peculiar phenomenon, which has happened there and is still happening. Billy, what was that, then? Do I have to beg once again for any information? Or is it, perhaps, a secret? Simeus, 129. No, it's not a secret. 130? It simply concerns that on the planet Venus, a peculiar process began about four years ago, completely transforming the entire planet. Billy, interesting, but I can draw no conclusions whatsoever from that. What's with this process? Simeus, 131. As I already said, it was about four years ago. 132. At the time, enormous elemental storms started on the planet, which changed nearly the entire surface of the planet. 133. Enormous masses of dust were thrown up and drove through the very dense and extensive cloud layers into free space. 134. How this was possible, however, is still absolutely unknown to us, because naturally speaking, the gigantic cloud layers would have had to absorb the millions of tons of dust and throw them back to the planet's surface mixed with water. 135. In a direct path, however, the dust that arose from storm erosions left the planet and drifted to the sun. 136. By this, the dust was burned up over the sun's outer envelope and was destroyed. 137. By the drifting off of this planetary matter, however, and by similar movements of enormous amounts of dust on the planet Venus, it changed its entire surface to a very great extent. 138. Tremendously deep rifts and valleys were excavated, while on the other hand, also huge mountains came to light, ranging up to about 12,000 meters high beneath the cloud layers and layers of steam. Billy. That is so incredible. If I remember correctly, the highest mountains were only about 10,000 meters high about 5 or 6 years ago. Semyas, 139. Sure, but this has completely changed in only about 4 years, and it isn't to be expected that this will soon fall to a new change. Billy, then it could remain so in the future? Semyas, 140. Sure. 141. So far, we only know that the whole process was triggered by the sun on the one hand, but a long and very thin, extended arm of that huge dark nebula, toward which the Sol system is drifting, played an even more important role. Billy, by that, you probably mean the dark nebula that drifts between the constellation Hercules and our solar system and toward which we are flying. Semyus, 142. Yes. Billy, how is it, actually? Will our system certainly drift into this dark entity? Semyus, 143. So far, it seems so, yes, but the amount of time until then is still long. Billy, but I now don't understand two things, on the one hand, that millions of tons of dust could penetrate through the Venusian clouds and also go out into space, because if dust gets into the clouds, then it connects to the tiny droplets that constitute these clouds or make them up. This then means that everything together must fall back to the planet's surface. On the other hand, I also don't understand that the dust, as you say, drifted towards the sun and was destroyed there, because an extension of the dark nebula. Semyas, 144. Listen to me, 
135. What you mentioned with regard to the amounts of dust and the clouds, that is of good correctness. 136. But now, as we found out, which I already explained, many millions of tons of this Venusian dust drifted up because of gigantic storms, by what means an opening arose in the cloud cover. 137. However, this could only happen because magnetic storms, triggered by various factors of the Sun, reach the planet Venus, which, in further development there, led to primeval world-like elemental storms. 138. Explaining this in every detail, however, would be too much. 149. This was on the one hand, and the magnetic storms of the Sun, with great certainty, must have been triggered by the aforementioned extension of the dark nebula arm. 150. Certain elements of the extension, at any rate, indicate this. 151. For reasons still unknown to us, and approximately 100 million kilometer long magnetic suction formed from the resulting magnetic storms, which, interestingly enough, hit the planet Venus exactly and held firm to it for several months and traveled with it. 152. The dust of Venus was then pulled up into this magnetic suction, along with all that planetary matter that likewise turned into dust because of the primeval world-like storms and their frictional effects. Billy, ah, now I understand things better, but tell me, how long will these storms keep on going? and what's probably going to happen with a dark nebula arm? And, have our scientists not noticed these processes? Surely they should have seen the drifting off of the dust. Semyas, 153. You don't seem to have listened to me properly, because I just explained that the storms lasted for several months. 154. To be precise, they raged on for nine months. 155. Since then, peace prevails on the planet again in this respect. 156. The Dark Nebula Arm, which, by the way, was to be calculated in its length to the parent nebula in several hundred billion kilometers, slowly dissolved and disappeared. 157. As to your other questions, it is to be explained that the scientists of the Earth could not track or detect these processes because their technological devices are insufficiently developed. 158. They are simply inadequate. 159. They weren't even able to detect the drifting off the planetary matter because there also aren't any suitable apparatuses or instruments, etc. available for that. 160. The extension arm of the Dark Nebula, which ran to the outer edge zones of the Sun, was less than 1,600 kilometers in diameter when it hit Venus, while it still had about 199 kilometers to the Sun. Explanation, the reverse principle of the tornado, like a whirlpool effect. 161. The measurements, therefore, also cannot be determined from the Earth with the devices that are still unsuitable for such purposes. Billy, that's understandable, because the terrestrial technology, indeed, isn't even sufficient yet to allow the scientists to study the Sun more closely, and it has a quite different size than this dark nebula arm. I read recently in an article in GEO that the poor Earth scientists once again have to revise their current acceptances of the Sun because during a solar eclipse, they discovered that their previous acceptances were just nothing more than delusions of the brain. They have finally encountered the fact that the so-called glowing envelope of the Sun pulsates, but they are already so megalomaniacal again to claim that it is the Sun itself that pulsates so. According to the GEO report, this pulsation should amount to 3,000 km, which cannot be right, however, because you yourself explained to me once that, on the one hand, only just the fiery mantle or even the outer mantle layers, so to speak, the stratospheres and ionospheres, etc., if I may so call them, 
would pulsate and that the half pulsation width is to be calculated, according to our measures, at 7,000 km, so thus the entire pulsation width is 14,000 km. The twits still maintain, however, that the sun is a true furnace all the way down to its core, where continuous nuclear fusions would take place. They still haven't encountered or come to the thought that the fireball of the sun could be just a purely external fact, while underneath a huge nuclear star of a special kind is hidden, a nuclear furnace, so to speak, which, through tremendous processes in its interior, hurls up its immense radiations and vibrations high above itself, and they become glowing and blazing seas of fire that shoot out like gigantic tongues of fire into outer space as prominences. One must really leave one thing to the twits, though, because now they seem to have finally found out that the solar internal processes must be completely different than they accepted until now. Perhaps now they will also slowly come to the fact that the sun is not a wavering and glowing mass but rather a firm star. And once they have found that out, then they will probably also encounter the fact that our sun, since its actual origin, is also many billions of years older than has been accepted up to now, just as they now also have to constantly revise the age of the universe. But they still haven't come so far and, therefore, still maintain all kinds of nonsense. But the time will, indeed, come for they have also already found out now that the sun has become smaller by a fairly large piece in the last 500 years, which traces back to the fact, according to your own words, that the fiery mantle collapses more and more into itself due to less energy from the planetary interior. It is. Semyas, 162. You shouldn't talk about that anymore, because what has already been said is already dangerously much. 163. But I must admit, you have a phenomenal memory for certain matters. 164. After all, I explained these things to you during your great journey. Billy, oh, one just notes some things. Semyas, 165. Well, let's leave this subject now. 166. I would like to tell you that in the meantime, I've read your fairy tales several times. 167. They're simply wonderful. 168. They're so entirely unlike all other fairy tales that I know, and moreover, they are extremely instructive. 169. Therefore, I've allowed myself to give them to Father, with the request that he makes them accessible to our peoples. Billy, now you're really crazy. Semyas, 170. I did tell you that I would do it if I thought that it would be worth it. Billy, then so be it. But now, how does it stand with the things concerning those of whom you wanted to go to the USA? I've had my experiences relating to this in the meantime, and it doesn't look good. Semyas, 171. You right? because we have also thoroughly dealt with everything again in this respect and found that we cannot place these decisions as conditions. 172. This would be an intrusion into the personal matters, which is why we must refrain from it, so we are cancelling this demand and condition. 173. We have our heavy burden with the human beings of Earth because we still cannot understand them properly and cannot analyze them precisely. 174. For this reason, we have decided to place no more demands or conditions at all in the future. 175. Despite our greatest efforts, we must now recognize ourselves that again and again, we make wrong analyses in reference to the evaluation of the human being of Earth or his concerns. 176. This is simply because the human being of this world very often harbors and maintains something else in his mind than what is truly in his subconscious or in his will. 177. The human being of Earth is extremely bewildering and inconsistent in these matters, which is why we will hold ourselves back from these things in the future. Billy. Ah, 
you've gained rather good insight there, although I must say that in spite of everything, you were right in very many things. Semyas, 178. Sure, but this correctness was always just there where, in reference to an evaluation of a human being of Earth, all facts let themselves be brought to a common denominator. Billy, those evaluations and predictions therefrom were, however, damn good, correct, and 100%. So they weren't our wrong evaluations. Semyas, 179. The wrong ones, however, were enough to keep ourselves from it. Billy, it is, despite the good ones, perhaps better that way. Semyas, 180. So it will be. Billy, well, I would still like to ask you how it actually stands with what I already asked you before, about the filming. I prepared everything for the beginning of June. But when I read about it in the reports the day before yesterday, there I saw that you said you would first discuss it further at the end of June. Semyas, 181. You would probably like to do this work sooner? Billy, certainly. Semyas, 182. It would be very beneficial to your health. Billy, exactly, I also thought that. Semyas, 183. I will see what I can do. Billy, you think? Semyas, 184. No, but I think that you could at least get out every now and then for two or three days. 185. But you know that you will often be on the move, without your being able to take even just one picture. 186. For these, for suitable pictures, we must always first find a suitable place. 187. At the same time, it will be the same as before, that you will very often be ordered somewhere by me, and when you get there, you have to go back empty-handed because human beings of Earth have gone to this place in the meantime. Billy, I understand already, but I've already counted on that. So that is certainly no problem. But what about the fact that maybe I can bring along group members? Semyas. 188. We still aren't clear to ourselves about that, but I'll clarify it now and orient you about it at our next meeting. Billy, you still know my proposal? Semyas, 189. I haven't forgotten it. 190. It was really an idea that is worth thinking about. Billy, good, then I await your decision. Semyas, 191. I will try to inform you of the decision soon. Billy, I'm glad about that. You know, I actually already have everything together insofar that I can get started. I've bought myself a small tractor and let a suitable trailer be made for it, in which I can also spend the night. So I don't always have to turn back and go home at night. Semyas, 192. Is your tractor this small vehicle which you have brought along? Billy, you probably mean with which I came here. Yes, that is it. A 700cc Kubota tractor. A Japanese product. Semyas, 193. You have the opportunity for a bed in it, then. Billy, you were a bit illogical, my golden child. My bed will, of course, be in the trailer. I really have no place for it in the tractor. Here on Earth, the technology is not yet advanced as far as with you, that one has it so modern as is the case in your ship. Semyas, 194. I understand. 195. It was a bit clumsy of me. Billy, that's not so bad. You know. I can lie a foam mattress down in the trailer and then sleep on it in a sleeping bag. So I have it pretty warm and cozy. So I'd then be underway on a tramp voyage, so to speak, as I have done previously. Only, then I was without my own vehicle and, therefore, slept in strange vehicles or even in forests, meadows, in roadside ditches, cemeteries, on low roofs or under bridges etc. Semyas, 196. You once told me that, I remember. 
197. It was a rather adventurous life. 198. Something that we ourselves don't know at all in such forms. Billy, you indeed must not live in the 20th century or with our Earth standard. Semyus, 199. Sure. Billy, do you already know when you will have your new ship, and can I then film it as well? Semyus, 200. It is not yet certain, but it could be that I will already have it when I call you for the big film and photo work. 201. Of course, you can then also take your pictures of it. Billy, that is dear of you, but tell me, I have got myself a video camera, do you have an idea of what it is? Semyus, 202. But of course. 203. Isn't such a thing very expensive? Billy, sure, but it's the best thing I can have in general for these purposes. My question now is whether the videotapes, the cassettes, will be impaired or damaged if I come into the proximity of the ship with them? Semyus, 204. That is unfortunately so, which is why you must be extremely careful. 205. Our ships have different magnetic vibrations, which would destroy your cassettes. Billy, well, then I'll be careful. Then I would have asked all questions for the time being. Semyas, 206. Then I would now like to briefly explain some important things to you, if you're not too tired. 207. It won't take up a lot of time, if you would still like to listen. Billy. Why shouldn't I? Semyas, 208. Then listen now very carefully, even if these things aren't very pleasant for you. 209. As I have found out, all of the original film material, which you have regarded as original up to now, has gone missing from you. 210. It. Billy, that's not possible, because just yesterday, I performed an inspection and found everything still in its place. Semyas, 211. You see, you were mistaken. 212. The film that you still have in your possession, it concerns a copy. 213. The original film, which you had coupled together from different roles into a single film. This was stolen from you already in a will and was replaced with a copy, which was also only made, however, after very evil changes had already been made to the original. Billy, that isn't possible, because I always had the film with me in safekeeping. And what should have been falsified therein? Falsifications are, in fact, tremendously costly, and on the other hand, why should falsifications have been made to my film? Semyas, 214. That is quite simple, 215. Through these evil manipulations, it's supposed to be made impossible for you and us with the human kind of Earth. 216. It is, however, as I told you, that you were robbed of your original film already and in will. 217. Then, in various parts of the film, Falsifications were added, namely in the form that in meticulous handwork, every single negative image was provided with a hair-thin line from my ship to the top of the image. 218. At the same time, this work was carried out so very well that it can hardly be found out that it concerns a falsification. 219. The same also happened with various of your slides. Billy, but... Why has this been done? It makes no sense to me. Semyas, 220. You were truly clueless even as a toddler. Billy, I really cannot piece it together. What are such hair-thin lines on the images of the film and the slides supposed to accomplish? Semyas, 221. That is really very simple. Once you think about what has already been alleged in stupid explanations about the origin of the individual films and slides. Billy, I'm sorry, but I cannot figure it out. Semyas, 222. 
It has been claimed that the pictures of my ship were made with a model that had been hanging on a string or something similar to a fishing device. Billy, I know these stupid allegations, of course. But nevertheless, I still don't understand the whole thing. Simeus, 223. It is so simple, however, and for my part, I don't understand that you cannot piece the things together just now. 224. So listen then, 225. The hair thin lines have been placed on the individual pictures so exactly and precisely that they fit on one another extremely precisely from picture to picture, giving the impression that the allegation corresponds to the correctness, that you have captured just a model on a string, etc. on the film. Billy, that is not possible. That would cost a fortune if one would do such a thing. Simeus, 226. Nevertheless, it has happened, and then one foisted on you a very good but false original, without you noticing it. Billy, this is really too much. But who has done this, then? Simeus, 227. I don't want to give information about that officially, but I will tell you afterwards. Billy. This is really serious, and over all these years, I've probably also let copies of this film be made and sold these. Simeus, 228. That's right, because there likely hasn't been a single copy given out by you that does not come from your falsified original or precisely that falsification that you regarded as the original. Billy, then the film is no longer of use to me at all. But I just don't understand why this huge effort was made and why so much money was spent to make these falsifications? Simeus, 229. Nevertheless, I explained to you why. 230. It is the only way to render you and all your work as well as our entire work impossible. 231. Since it can be found out on the films that these hair-thin lines are remarked. You yourself can imagine what will happen. Billy, yes, now I understand. This may actually mean that everything could collapse. Simeus, 232. Sure, and we must now prevent that very quickly. 233. This can only happen by my giving you opportunity to obtain such clear film and photo material that any doubt will be removed even for the terrestrial scientists. 234. We have to hurry very much with all these things, however, because in America, the first steps have already been taken to analyze these falsified old films more closely, and the possibility exists that the artificial lines manipulated into them will be found, at least in those slides and parts of the film that exhibit these lines more distinctly. 235. For this reason, you will have to take new pictures as soon as possible, which leave nothing more to be desired in clarity of reality. 236. So you will already have to be ready in a few days to carry out this renewed hard work. Billy, that won't be easy, because we do always have the big problem on account of the appropriate places. Simeus, 237. Calmly let me worry about that. 238. Although, you will often have to travel very far. Billy, I'm completely counting on you for that. Simeus, 239. Sure, but what has been mentioned isn't the only evil, unfortunately, because more evil things have likewise arisen through the S brothers. Billy, I already know that, and I'm litigating with them. Simeus, 240. You are mistaken, because that isn't everything from them. 241. Through their initiative, they have also created a stir in America, which will still bring about its consequences. Billy, that certainly cannot be so bad, however. But we'll see. Simeus, 242. Just don't take all of this lightly. 243. Everything looks rather bad. 234. 
And if the spirit and whole mentality in your group itself doesn't change very quickly, then everything will collapse. 245. Between 6 and 12 months would then likely be the end and complete destruction. 246. As never before, it is now of urgent necessity that each individual group member finally creates order in him or herself and allows the community to be a community. 247. But only a short period of time remains for this, otherwise everything will be destroyed. 248. You should make this clear to everyone definitively. 249. Everything now stands, and in particular the continued existence of the group and the fulfillment of the mission, on the knife's edge. Billy, I've spoken enough. I just don't care anymore. If it gets that far, then I'll simply give up and leave, for good. I won't be able to do it anymore. Until then, I'll still wait, and if it then just comes in such a way, then... Semyas, 250. I understand you, and I also don't want to rebuke you for it. 251. It is your right and your will to be free. Billy, I think so, too, and it would be totally out of place if you wouldn't see this. Semyas, 252. I don't want to influence you otherwise. Billy, good, then many thanks for your understanding. Semyas, 253. Let's talk no more of it now, because it is more important that we are united in terms of what is to come regarding the creation of new proof. 254. In this regard, I can tell you that I can bring down to earth at least one large telemeter disc about 125 to 200 centimeters in diameter, for the film and photo work, which you can then film in such a way that you'll stand with this and touch it. Billy, and you think that this will be enough proof for all the fact twisters and skeptics? Semyas, 255. Certainly not for everybody, but surely for a large and important part of these human beings. Billy. I'll let myself be gladly surprised. Surely there will again be those who will claim that I would have hung a model on a fishing rod. Semyas, 256. We will keep the distance from the recording camera to the object and to you so far that such a claim will be impossible. Billy, at least one ray of hope. Semyas, 257. You shouldn't worry about that. Just let it be in my hands. 258. This time, I myself will think up how the evidence will be best suited in this respect. Billy, that relieves me of many thoughts. Semyas, 259. Sure. Billy, do you have any other special things? Semyas, 260. No, not at the moment. Billy, you realize... However, that I don't make headway with my tractor as fast as you do with your ship. I can only get 13 and a half kilometers per hour with my little tank. Semyas, 261. That isn't so important. 262. You should take your time, also because of your health. Billy, of course, but how long should everything really last? Semyas, 263. I told you that, 264. Two to three months. 265. A long time, certainly, but you also need this, in order to bring your health back on a better way. 266. With everything, I only wish that you shall be very careful. Billy, I'll be careful, you know that. Semyas. 267. Good, then you should go now and still sleep a little, before the new day has completely dawned. Billy, I'm not tired yet, and if you don't mind, I'd still like to write down the report, if you still have time to transmit it to me. Semyas, 268. As you wish. 269. If you are really not too tired. Billy, certainly not. 
Moreover, after such a long time, all eyes will be looking for the report anyway. After all, they are all wondering what you had to say. It has, indeed, been about three months since we last saw each other. Simeus, 270? Sure. 271. Then I will comply with your wish. 272. How long do you need to go home with your vehicle? Billy, oh, you know, this little armored carrier only moves 13.6 kilometers per hour, and therefore, I need about 10 minutes. Simeus, 273. Then be ready at 4.45 a.m. Billy, okay, then till we meet again, and give everyone a rather dear greeting from me. Also, I want to convey to you and all the others dear greetings from all the group members, even though no one has actually told me to do this. Practically all of them are sleeping, and except for Engelbert and Maria, no one knows that I have come to you. I tore Engelbert from his sleep at 2 a.m., so that he could take over my night watch, which would have lasted until 3 a.m. Unfortunately, without this watch, it just won't work. Quetzal was quite right with this. Simeus, 274. You're all doing the right thing. Billy, how is it, then, when I'm on the move, is the watch still necessary then? Simeus, 275. In my opinion, it should be continued. Billy, I thought that, too. There is just too much all around. Simeus, 276. With that, you speak a true word. 277. But now you should go, and please, greet everyone rather dearly for me. 278. And I want to thank everyone for their dear greetings. Billy, I will. Bye. Simeus, 279. Till we meet again. Billy, and come back quite soon. Simeus, 280. That will be so.